What we're really going to be doing today is giving you an overview of how a course that we created based on a specific event that happened in our community um, allowed us to hopefully take some of the, the ideas of, of Becker as well as his influences you know, in the work of Sheldon and his team and try to convey it on a level that um, many of the students that are in the Ontario Community College system can grasp and hopefully make some, some use of. So what we're trying to do here today is, I think it speaks to some of what Sheldon was getting at last night. And um, uh, oftentimes we, we get into a situation as educators where we have all this information that is absolutely brilliant. And you know, when we look at the work of Becker and we look at his influences and we look at, you know, I could spend months just delving into uh, you know, the, uh, the chasm of existentialism and all of these things. But uh, quite often what we really, I think, as educators need to look at is the rubber meets the road stuff. And that's when you have students um, of varying backgrounds that are coming in uh, asking some of those questions, wondering specifically how potentially they can find some place, not only in this community, but also in the larger scale on this planet, um, and find some solace with it. So um, that's what we're going to be looking at today. The incident that occurred was April of 2007 in our community. And uh, I remember that day almost probably as vividly as I remember 9-11, driving to work and I kept hearing these news clips. I couldn't seem to get a radio station that would give me the full story. I just heard lockdown and shooting and gunmen. I thought, what is going on? And so I finally got to work and I went into my office and they'd already had a radio playing. I thought, okay, I'm just gonna stand here for about a half an hour and see if I can get the story. And the story was that a young high school student had taken a gun and he was going from one high school to another and uh, with the thoughts of, of you know being uh, aggressive towards somebody and, and possibly shooting them and uh, it, it, it was terrorizing our community. Um, later on the young boy had had been uh, caught and actually it, it was a complete fabricated story that what we've learned since then is uh, although this was never aired by the media but what actually had happened was the young kid was going to sell the gun and had taken it from his parents uh, and was sitting in his buddy's basement watching all this stuff going, oh my God, I'm on the news now because I have this gun. Uh, I wasn't, he wasn't planning to go and shoot anybody. But um, anyways, again, I think following the Virginia Tech, there's this you know, hypersensitivity to a, a, a student with a gun. Um, anyway, so later on that day, John and I were sitting in, in my office and we were just talking about the panic, the ripple effect, right, through the community, through our institution. And we thought there's something going on here. What's going on? And uh, at the time, we were kind of throwing out there, creating a course, something, a general elective for the college. What would be something that would really engage with students? What's something really relevant to today's world? And uh, so we're sitting there, and I said, you know what? There's a real, my background psychology. So I said, there's a real piece of psychology, right? There's like a psychology of, of panic going on here. And John looked at me, he goes, no, Sue, it's, it's deeper. It's really a psychology of terror. And I thought, yeah, you're right. It is a psychology of terror. So we thought, geez, I wonder if there's something more here. So we started, we broke off, we started to do kind of our own research, but a week later we came back, we're like, I, I thought I was just like awesome. I'm like, oh my God, I found this whole theory that explains this, I'm so cool. And John's like, no, I'm cooler than you because I found this theory. I'm like, what's the theory? Terror management theory. And it was like, wow, we found a theory that explains this. And, and that's really how this got started. And within a couple of days, we actually had emailed Sheldon and he had mentioned about the conference last year. So that was our first time coming here to learn more about it. That's how we were introduced to Ernest Becker's work. And it's just been phenomenal since then. Um, it's, it's turned into this course for us. We started working on it uh, last summer and uh, ran it September to, or sorry, January to April of this year as the first go and we're running it again and we'll talk a bit more about the actual course in a second. But what, uh, it is a general elective, so we open it up to anybody at the college. Uh, we try to get it put into the blocks of uh, where students can access it and we see everybody. So we've had aviation students, electronic students, uh, uh, paramedics, uh, the radiation students. Um, we have roughly 48 hours over the course of the semester with these kids, um, which works out to three hour blocks for, for 15 weeks, give or take, right? Because you usually have a week of, of, uh, of stuff. Um, 
But the interesting thing about it, and, and I use this phrase all the time in, in class uh, when I tell the students, you know, reading Becker's like peeling an onion. There's always there's a layer after layer after layer after layer. Um, and in 15 weeks, we can you know, barely get through a couple layers of, uh, of the Becker onion. Um, but with that being said, in order to understand or maybe internalize some of this stuff, um, many of these students don't have a background in philosophy. Um, you know, so we come and say, oh, you know, Becker was heavily influenced by the existentialists, right? And Kierkegaard rocks, and oh, and, and let's talk about Sartre, and let's talk about, oh, you know, did you, you know, make this link to Nietzsche? And these kids are like, uh, Nietzsche? Is that, you know, is it a new brand of uh, Adidas? Um, <laughs> so we don't have the ability to do that, but what we chose is to actually, and Becker was a big inspiration for this because of his... Um, interest in so many diverse subject areas that we said, okay, well, let's do that too and give them the, the, the things that they need to be able to create this picture. So what we did or what we attempted to do was sort of to create this course sort of as a multidisciplined approach. Um, the, the results seemed to, to, to indicate, at least to us, that it, it seemed to have some kind of significance, um, you know, because the, number one, a lot of students wanted to take the course and then the next time around it's sort of the word of mouth thing worked and people sort of, oh yeah, we became known as Team Terror at her institution. <laughs> we even actually have a little caricature. Uh, there was a student fundraiser, so we sat down and they drew a little cartoon <laughs> with wearing fatigues. Um, uh, so we sort of became known as Team Terror in the institution. The uh, attendance and the participation was great. And when you give students, any teacher will know this, if you've got a three-hour block and you give them two breaks and two opportunities not to come back, and they still come back, then that's generally a good sign. 